Good day. Welcome to session 9 of Data Network Security 1. Today we'll be looking at missing function level access control. At the end of this session, one will be able to explain what missing function level access control is, see the different types of vulnerabilities that falls into this category, and also find out some ways of preventing this attack. We we'll also exploit uh, atoromutual.com that can give us some exposure to what access controls are. Now, what are access controls or what are function level access controls? Now, most web pages or web apps or web applications can have users with different levels of accounts. Now, in such circumstances, the basic user authentication is not enough. Now, one may have higher levels whilst the other some lower privileges. Now, we'll look at these two scenarios and see how best to secure such vulnerabilities. What are the implications once we have missing function level access control? Now, if access to privilege accounts functions was controlled by merely hiding functions within a code, which most programmers do, most programmers will just write a simple if statement or if else statement. For example, if username equals to administrator, give them this privilege, this privilege, this privilege, else give them another privilege. And these are coded in plain text in web applications or web pages. Now, if it's just that and it's not checked, pro properly checked, we have some form of function level access control vulnerability. A hacker that has compromised a lower level user account could attempt to assess the privileged account functions and data and get, getting data from there by just guessing the cause of the higher function. Now, how will you know that you are vulnerable to function or missing function level access control? Now, first of all, does your, UR, does your UI, user interface, show any navigation to unauthorized functions? Are servers or are your server-side authentication and authorization checks missing? Now, once you check these things, you'll be able to know that you are exposed or not. You can also browse your application with a privilege level or privilege rule. Then revisit that application again or revisit any restricted page with the same credential. Now, if you're able to access that page, it means that your server is likely to be vulnerable. Now, one typical type of vulnerability associated with missing function level access control is direct access to administration page. So any common user to a page can access certain pages just by surfing the net. You can have the, the privilege of viewing certain pages. Now, there might be other pages that are also restricted where you need some level of credentials to be able to view such pages. Now, an attacker may be able to access these pages by just guessing. So like we saw in ad other sessions, I can guess for a web page that a website may have admin.php, for example, or index.php, or admin.cgi. Once an attacker is able to guess such links or such addresses, then it's possible for the hacker to be able to access the administrative page or administration page. Now, access to administration script should not be allowed without any proper authentication. Now, here's an example of a direct access to administration page. So for instance, we have HTTPS, which is secured, www.altoromutual.com. And you'll find this in Sakai. Once you go to the Sakai lab, lab you will be able to do these, these um, authentication checks or direct access level authentication checks. Now, you realize that once the admin slash admin dot 
ASPX is made out, you get access to the login page. And if the login page of the admin is not secured enough, then automatically you will have access to that page. For instance, here you are only supposed to enter some numbers to authenticate you as a user. Once that is done, you are in. And hackers use this to actually hack administration pages. Now, the next vulnerability we want to look at is privilege escalation. Now, here there are two main types of pri privilege escalation. We have the vertical privilege escalation and we have the horizontal privilege escalation. Now, with the vertical privilege escalation, this is where a user with a lower privilege okay, is able to assess content reserved for higher privilege users. So all I have to do, for, for instance, for a web app is to view A, B, C, D pages. Now, with that same credential, if I'm able to assess EFG, which are for probably the administrator or for the accounts of which I don't have authorization to, if I'm able to do that, that is vertical privilege escalation. And that's a vulnerability. We, example of that is internet banking. So internet banking users can assess sites administrative functions. They can assess administrative sites or perform administrative functions, even using their lower credentials or their lower privileges. And the next one we are looking at is horizontal privilege escalation. And here, a normal user is able to assess a colleague or a fellow normal user's accounts or functions. So we are both probably tellers or we are both having the same credential levels. Now, if I'm able to use my credential to assess the content of your, your page, then that is a horizontal privilege escalation vulnerability. Example is internet banking user A assesses the bank account of user B. So here we have some examples of vertical privilege escalation. So we log in as a normal user, say JS, J Smith. Now, once J Smith logs in, he browses to the admin.asp page. And once he gets to admin.asp page, he is able to assess admin functions. Once he, he or she finds out about these functions, he can either add another account, change passwords, or add new users, of which he has no privilege. Now, for horizontal privilege escalation, we can identify user numbers identi identified from the vertical attack. So horizontal attack is aided by vertical attack. So you can use vertical attack to access or to get access to a horizontal privilege escalation vulnerability. Because once you know the user, you'll be able to use that information gathered from that site to know the admin's password. And once that is done, you'll be able to infiltrate that page. Now, another example of the horizontal privilege escalation is using a proxy or a temper tool, which we looked at earlier on, that this comes with most browsers. So once we go to tools, we can see temper data there. Now, when we switch on this temper data and we check on the account details to view accounts, we'll be able to view some details with regards to that particular page or that particular account. And once that is done, your data is exposed and you can be hacked. Now, temper data allows the account ID to be modified before the submit. So once I know I use the temper tool to get your account number, before doing a final submission, I can alter that account number to another account. And we can see from the slides, we, ca we can temper accounts from 100 to 1001160150. And if it were to be a bank transaction, your money is gone because now 
we can see or the attacker can view your page, see how much you have in there, and if possible, even withdraw whatever is in your account. How do we prevent missing function level access control? Now, one key thing is the application enforcement mechanism should deny all access to by default. And you should require explicit grants to specify rules for access to every function. Now, if this function is involved in a workflow, then we need to check to make sure the conditions are in the proper state to allow access. Don't rely on the presentation layer to control flow to authorize functions. You must, all, you must also imp implement checks in the controller or business logic, which we saw earlier on that you can have that in your application server. So once you're able to finish lab seven of the Sakai, or lab seven in the Sakai platform, you should be able to exploit missing function access levels with regards to vulnerabilities. So in this slide, I've been speaking to you about how and what missing function access, level access control is, the different types of vulnerabilities that falls in this category, how to prevent this type of attacks, then we're able to also see how to exploit these access control within the autoroomutual.com. This will bring us to the end of session nine. I will see you in session 10.